that are going to be right and satisfying for your people. Because we know that when we put you first, that we can do anything but fail. So God, we ask you to go before us. Help us to make decisions for us. Lord, help us to do the things that we need to do. And now, God, we invite your Holy Spirit in this place. Rain, rule, and super rule. Because without you, we can do nothing. But we know that you we can do anything and everything. But we just want to tell you thank you. Lord, we offer this prayer in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone agrees and said, amen. 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 Before the choir sings, let me take a point of privilege. Say that there are persons on the agenda who have to leave, and so I'll take the personal privilege of moving and shuffling it around. I think at this particular point, uh, Sister Tilda Whitaker Bell will come with a woke vote, and then we'll, uh, um, after the choir, I'm sorry, after the selection of the choir, Sister Tilda prepares to come. Then we'll go with Brother Jim to give us readings. So to tell me. Community training, community engagement, 
and we work with community leaders in doing that. How do we do that? We sponsor a training called Freedom School all over Eastern North Carolina. We have conducted eight Freedom School trainings this year in Eastern North Carolina. Uh, for many counties, we're in about 10 counties that we're active in. We're adding seven more as the election approaches. Just to push people to the poll. We're nonpartisan, but our whole uh, purpose is to engage our communities and provide the training to do that. How do we do that? So that's what we do. We show people how to do that. The next 58 days, we are pushing voter registration and IDs for those who have their proper IDs. We're running into a lot of people that don't, still don't know their precincts, where they live, their precinct chairs, and so on for local areas. And also, their IDs are outdated. They don't have the right addresses on them. So I challenge everybody in here, as we talk to people along the way, ask them to please check their ID address. It's the same as at the poll, I mean, at the ballot, their registration, uh, board election. Um, we have paid opportunities. We have phone bankers right now that are calling all over Eastern North Carolina. We have canvases that will be starting up the 17th of this month. We'll have trainings. If you're interested in knowing about those paid opportunities, please contact me. I am on Facebook, Tilda Worker Bailey. You can message me. I don't mind you getting to my message box. Um, we are gathering volunteers also for events, like the one I'm doing uh, that I just left over in Rocky Mount on Bull Street. They have over a thousand people in attendance so far this morning at that community festival. So I wanted to brush over, say hello, say thank you for the invitation, talk a little bit about World Vote, tell your opportunities, uh, reach out to me. I'm going to move out the way. And again, thank you so much for allowing me these few minutes to introduce our organization. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time out of your business schedule to come. Before Brother Jim comes, I, I would like to introduce two groups of two sets of people. First, let me introduce to you, and I'll ask them to stand. Come up here to turn to face the persons who have sponsored this uh, magnificent event. From District 51, Jim Wren and Valerie Kenny, if you all come. Give them a hand while they come. <laughs> From 61, Reverend Oliver Washington and Gerald Lindsay. And from 4 1, Reverend Mayor Hinton and Talbot Cooper. We thank them for the uh, effort that they have put into it, the amount of hard work went into this. We don't take it lightly, we don't take it for granted. We thank you for doing this, and uh, we get to that. Thank you. Today, uh, let me introduce to you, if you will. Intro County Democratic Committee, Chairperson Alfreda Perkins. First Vice, Abby Lane. Second Vice, Nathan O'Ree. And Third Vice, Ryan Jones. Thank you for your work as well. I'd be remiss if I did not ask all the elected officials if you'll stand and be recognized as we celebrate and salute you. Thank you. Brother Jim Brim will come and give us greetings for the occasion. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you all for coming. On behalf of East Coast County Democratic Party Precincts 51, 61, and 41, we welcome you to this event. Our purpose is to inform people about the voting rules and regulations and their voting rights and to introduce to you some of the candidates. Many candidate names are not familiar to all of us. Uh, it's a very uh, long ballot, and we want to get people familiar with all the names of the ballot. It's a very important election. Every vote counts. We also want to know where to stand in these candidates are issues important to us, those for Edgecombe County, like women's reproductive rights, 
voting rights, affirmative action, equal rights, gender equality, workers' rights, public education, immigrant rights, and affordable health care for all, just to name a few. We hope we all will learn from this form and leave here more motivated to tell your friends and your relatives and neighbors. Make every effort to make a plan to get out and vote in this election. And remember how in this area, right up here in the road in Red Hill, which called Hamilton after slavery, only enslaved people rallied by the hunters to demand the right to vote. The right to vote was fought for, and we can't let it, uh, we're not going to go back. We're not going to go back. It also talks about what is acceptable ID. 
And I did have a flyer for that, two flyers. I want to start with the voter photo ID requirement, that form right there. And it, say, it says that beginning with the 2023 municipal election, and all kinds of voters will be asked to show photo ID. We show photo ID in March. We show photo ID in May. We're going to have to show photo ID uh, in this election. Uh, we do know that litigation is still in form right now in reference to that. But unless there's going to be a change, which I know is too late now, that you're going to have to have, have photo ID. Now, there's a difference between voter ID and photo ID. Don't be confused by that because some people would like to confuse you. Uh, the only thing you need to have is a valid ID when you go to vote. You do not have to have a photo ID or a voter ID, but you do have to have an ID with your picture on it. It could be any ID that's valid that has your picture on it. Okay, and then we got a list of those right here. Everybody got a copy of this, I hope, a list of what you can use. Okay? Then it also, on the back of that form, it has a table as to if your driver's license has expired, that you can still use that in the election based on your age. And you got an age graphic here that will show you what you can use in reference to that. I'm going to cover this information and then I'm going to stop. And then I'm going to have, uh, let you ask questions if anybody has any questions. It says qualifications to register to vote. Y'all have that copy? It says you must be a U.S. citizen. And I think somebody asked me to address the Constitution Amendment that's on the ballot. And it's in reference to whether you are a citizen in order to be able to vote. Uh, I, I thought that all along that you have to be a citizen to vote. I'm just telling you that's what I thought, unless I'm changed. Okay, the other part of this, uh, in reference to the qualification to vote, be mindful that if your age 17-year-old will turn 18 before uh, November the 5th, that they're eligible to vote. If they turn 18 before November the 5th, they're eligible to vote. If they are already pre-registered, they are in our computer. And that will automatically float over as, as their birthday to allow them to show that they are ready to vote. Uh, uh, we've been checking. I got a granddaughter that's birthday is October 31. She'll be 18. And we've been tracking it. And on the 31st day of October, I want to make sure that that change is over so that she can go to that poll before November 5th. She can vote early. Okay. It is important that we vote early. Everybody know that. It's important to go out and vote early. It's very important because we never know what's going to happen on November 5th. Uh, with the laws that are changing moment by moment, day by day, you just never know what may happen. Early vote days again, October 17th. We have three locations in Edgecombe County. Uh, I'm not comparing us with Nash County. Nash County has four locations. Nash County got 68,000 registered voters. We got 37,000 registered voters. So we think that there are three uh, early vote sites is sufficient to handle our voters if they vote early. In 20, 2008, we voted 19,000 early votes. So we could, if we did it in uh, 2008, we could vote 20,000 in uh, 2024. That way you only need about 18,000 more to go to vote on election day. Then we'll have 100%. Then we get 100%? Then we get 100%. Then we get 100%. The voter registration application. I, I want to talk one moment about this. There are many people that are doing voter registration drives. The law says that if you do a voter registration drive, you're supposed to turn that voter registration in to the election board within five days. We never talk about that, but it's being scrutinized now. 
So make sure that if you're doing a voter registration drive, wherever you are, get up to the Board of Election, whether it be Edge, Conaz, Wake, wherever, Halifax, wherever it is, make sure you get them in the mail within five days. We do not want that to be a problem. Now, we've had, uh, on the day of Saturday, on Thursday, we had about 350 voter registrations come in uh, from the state board. The state board was scanning those into our, our, our system. And, of course, they get overloaded. They're not able to do that. So we now have uh, uh, about, about 100 now that we're working on trying to get them in. In the last 45 days, we've had over 5,000 voter registrations coming to our office. <laughs> Somebody's doing a good job. About 5,000. And again, we're only about 100 from getting those in. Okay, so we're working on that. So I'm going to stop right here. If anybody have any questions, I'll be going to try to answer them. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Perry, 31025. Yes, sir. My, my question is, what is the criteria for felon to be able to vote? That's a very good question. If, if you go by what the law has done, Everybody. no offense. <laughs> but if you go by what the law has done, everybody's confused. <laughs> I'm just telling you now, okay, because first they said you could do one thing, then they said you could do another thing. But let me try to answer that question as to what we can do now. If you are or have been a convicted felon and you have completed your sentence, paid all your probation fees, and went through your probation period, you are eligible to re-register and vote. You do have to re-register. Don't let them out tell you that you want to be able to walk up and not re-register. Now, on, on same-day registration, I need to talk a little bit about that too, and I really don't want to take too much time. But on same-day registrations, it, it was, in fact, at one time, where same-day registrations, when a person came in and did a same-day registration, they were able to feel like that they have uh, registered and are ready to vote. Well, not quite the same now. That registration has to go through a completed process. Got to go through the mail process and come back. But there's plenty of time from early vote time until Cameron's date of the election, which is November 15th. So don't, don't be confused by that. Go and everybody that's not registered by uh, October the 11th will not be able to vote November 5th. Don't let me confuse you. If you have not registered by November, by October the 11th, excuse me, you will not be able to vote on election day. But if you're not registered by October 11th, you still can go to the Early vote sites, register and vote. Don't ask me how the law does that, but it does, okay? So that's a good thing to know, that you can, if you're not registered by October the 11th, people say, well, you can't vote. Yes, you can. You can go and vote early. Register and vote early. You must have your ID when you come to register and vote early. Uh, there are going to be some uh, applications that have come in that's going to require uh, Need ID verification when you go to vote. If you see that, uh, if you all say need ID, just have your ID when you go to vote. You'll be okay. Okay? Good question, sir. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Hey, Judge. Hey, there have been talks about purging of the voter registration rolls. I was wondering if the Board of Elections had been made aware of what um, were the guidelines for the purges and what people can do if they realize they may have been purged or don't know. Put that okay, that's another very good question. And all questions are going to be good questions. Okay? Yeah. Um, there is a purging process. The purging process uh, comes, we call it, we call it list maintenance. Okay. Now, the purging process that are going on right now is felons and deaths. So we are purging those as they come in. And we were doing it one time a month. Now we are doing them weekly by requirement by law. So that is now. Um, if anybody has not voted in two federal elections, 
you are going to be listed as uh, removed when you go to vote. And if you have not uh, uh, voted in two federal elections, you still can vote. All you got to do is re-register and vote. So don't wait till November 5th, because you won't be able to register and vote then. Okay? Good question, dude. Thank you. Anybody else? Important that we get our questions answered here. Very important. Uh, while you're thinking about it, in the last election, uh, Reverend Shrewl, uh they threw out about a thousand mail in ballots, but there was something wrong with it. There are uh, moves there, as Reverend Shrewl said, to, to wipe 250,000 voters off the books. Important that you get your information right, get your information straight, so that we won't have to worry about that. Any question that you think you might have. I think somebody else might have, dogs. With that in mind, that with that in mind, that 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 there is going to be scheduled to eliminate or remove two hundred and fifty thousand voters. Is there a link or some way that people can go on to see if their names are in the two hundred and fifty thousand? Now, I don't, I don't know that because I don't know what their list is. And of course, if they're such a list, it is, I'm sure. You know, we're not going to be privileged to that list. Okay? However, you can go on the state board and it says, verify your voter registration. And I, I would encourage everybody in here to do that. It only takes you about less than two minutes to go on the, board, uh, the state board of elections. It's the NCSVE, North Carolina State Board of Elections. Go on there and check your own voter registration out. I would tell you that you can pull yourself a ballot up, but now you can't do that. Okay? All right. So, uh, that and, and, and uh, Reverend Brewer made another good point about absentee ballots. Whenever we can start mailing them out, I don't know when that may be. And, I, and if I sound negative about this, because I feel not. Okay? Because we've done a lot of work. And we are at thirty-eight thousand dollars, and thirty-eight thousand dollars will cost us over twelve or thirteen thousand dollars in here. This is it's on council, you know. And I'm a little disappointed that we're gonna have to do that again, maybe, you know. And the way it looks, it looks like that we maybe have to do that. Yes, ma'am. This question, this question is probably for our attorney here, Sarah. If that's the case, and it is the case that. 38,000 ballots may be invalid, a cost already to the taxpayer. Is there a recourse? Can taxpayers do class action lawsuits against Kennedy or whomever it would go to yes, for sir. this cost, this loss? I mean, I mean, we as taxpayers, what's our recourse when we've been harmed? I don't, I don't think you would be able to have any kind of class action against Mr. Kennedy because he was just asking for the courts to make that decision. The courts would have made that decision, but the Board of Elections still has the right to appeal and all implications I believe they want to. Say yes, the State Board of Elections. Um, so it's not over and it's going to have to wait and see. I don't think the law would allow individuals to be able to sue Mr. Kennedy. I would add to that, though, that the sure. state uh, of North Carolina is definitely looking into that because we said 12000 but it was $1.3 million that had already been um, printed. $1.3 million that had already been printed. Real okay. cool. Yes, sir. Yeah, but the last time we had, he didn't want his name on the ballot. It's not him. Okay, He's telling everybody to vote for Trump. He don't want his name on the ballot. That's something North Carolina does. Read, read up on it. And, 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 and I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about everybody else. But, but, but I'm saying it's out there. I don't share it. And also, you tell them to go to the State Board of Relations website. All you got to do is go to the search engine and just type in voter registration. You ain't got to go good. to that site. Very good. Very good. Thank you for that. Now, let me talk just one more minute about uh, absentee ballots. Uh, Mr. Rain, I'll be finishing with you, sir. Uh, absentee ballots. Do y'all remember that you could get your absentee ballot into uh, the Board of Elections office or in the mail three days after the election date. 
no longer. It has to be in our office by 7.30 election day, November 5th. If it's not in there, somebody says, well, mine was postmarked. That matter. They changed the law. And when I say they, we know who changed the legislators to make those changes for the state of North Carolina. Legislators did that. No offense, Mr. Willingham, but, but you know that the legislators made that. And of course, everybody didn't go for it. I understand. Okay? So, uh, but we want to make sure that you get your absentee ballots in early when you get them. Make sure you put in an ID. Okay? That's how they get turned around. By the time it gets turned around, we get a, a one in the office, and we have to send back in what they call uh, an impediment form to try to get that uh, redone. By that time, it may be too late. So do not let that happen to you. Make sure you get them in and get them into the office by November 5th, 7.30 p.m. Okay. Well, I have a question about your
change that, mostly because of the immigrant population that are now coming in. And then naturalized, they can change how that works. That's all they just want to legislation. Just want to make you aware that that's what's doing. Now, I don't know if anybody else is here knows how to speak up. All I want to say is a precursor of Project 2025. Let them in it's a precursor of 2025. Trying to do away with birthright citizenship. And we still got it in the 14th Amendment Constitution, but you got 2025 want to repeal the 14th Amendment. And so that's what that's it's tricky. That's why they get aware of. So we need to be able to vote no that constitutional amendment. Because it's it's attacking birthright citizenship. Yeah, uh, on the voter registration, I knew there was something else I wanted to say about this. On the voter registration application, please be mindful that right now we have had to change this voter registration three times since we started doing voter registration because of added parties, and uh, they probably want to change it again. But those that you do have are still valid. They just don't have all 15 parties. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yes. Now, I want to expose that person to have to be asked or told if it will happen. Because this is Good point, good point, good point. She was saying that um, that if you're going to see or assist somebody uh, in the polls, that you must uh, be asked by the voter. But anybody can help anybody as long as that voter asks anybody. It's, uh, even uh, they can ask my poll workers for assistance. Okay? So anybody can help anybody as long as it's not their employer. Okay? So that's a good point. So if somebody comes in and need assistance, uh, they, they can come in the door, stand right in the door and say, I'd like this person to help me. So don't let nobody turn away. And I think I saw your hand. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Just want to get clarity. Um, Mr. Gonzalez said that absentee balance, does it have any stray marks, anything on it? that you're not going to be able to use those. Could you address that, please? Myth. Oh, yes, okay. that's okay. It's been a myth going around. I don't know who sent it out. They, they, they claim AI sent it out. I'm just telling you that. It's an AI sent out saying that if, you, if your ballot was marked on, don't use it and turn it back in. Well, you don't have to turn in three. And then after three, you don't get another one. Because early voting, you must... And we must write on those early vote applications and ballots because they are retrievable. Early vote ballots are retrievable because they're really not voting until November 5th. A November 5th ballot is not to be written on at all. Somebody write on that ballot, don't take it. That's the one you don't take. But it on that, but see, the mindset says if anybody write on the ballot, don't take it. No, you early vote. They got to write on those ballots. Because they got to be able to identify them to put them in precinct order after the election. And that helps uh, to uh, for the governor to make their appointments, etc. when they do what we call voter by tabulation districts. Okay? All right. I hope I answered everybody's question. And, uh, thank y'all for your time. Any other questions, comments before our purpose for these? I see, I see do, you, do you have a copy of the amendment? Do you have a copy of the amendment? I know it's on the ballot, but I can't. You got a copy of it because I, I got mine at home. I don't have to
Have there been enough observers from inside on election day and early voting day? Are there observers? That's a question for your Democratic chair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got some work to do. Because now I work back partially. And one time, and this is important why we need to volunteer oh, it's very important. at the poll. I'm going to stand up to say it. Don't get too long. I'm going to stand up. Let's go. 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 let us go 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 let us so there is a need, and I know we got a lot of seniors retired. We need volunteers at the polls. We never know when we're going to have to assist a vote. On top of that, when you have the drive, I mean the ones and the handicap ones, we need people out there to observe that. And that's also a place that there could be a little shenanigans. We need assurance that everything is going according to a citizen's right to vote. Where do we have volunteer? How do you volunteer? Uh, question for the chair. And let me say this before you say this, Chair. Okay. Observers are appointed either by the Democratic Party chair from the county or the Democratic Party chair from the state. That's right. Now, if you get appointed from the state, help me out on this, uh, Ms. Burke. You can uh, observe anywhere in the state. That's right. Okay? So if you get appointed by the state and you can appoint, observe at any precinct, she can assign you to a precinct and that's the precinct that you work. You know, now uh, 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 the observers have to be turned in five days before the first vote, election day or the other vote. Okay. All right. Thank you for that good question. Okay. Very good question. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. At this time, we're going to begin uh, with our candidates uh, who have signed up to come and share some information with you. I'm going to ask my wife to come up and lay in the uh, time. Five minutes is your is our limit. So maybe the time in the ball is okay. All right, those who have signed up, let me have, if you will, Chairman Little Wicked. My wife is gonna make the time sit up here so they can hear us. Election. 
we could lose our democracy. We really could lose it. It's important who we get elected, elected to these offices that will make these appointments for these boards and commissions. But that is where we have a lot of major decisions uh, that will continue the, the, the growth that we have in our communities in this country. We are obviously encouraged to do everything that all of the other people have supported and support all of our lesser incumbents and some of our new candidates that are running for these offices. I know most of them, but not all of them. And I assure you that they will do a good job for us. And I will be still be around for questions that you might have as it relates to the things that Thank you so much. All right, thank you for the call. And I'll be quick because I too am unposed on your ballot thanks to your hard work and work. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But I just wanted to echo the sentiments of everyone. We are all here, one, because we care. Two, because we know that it takes action to get the work done as a whole. So I want to challenge everyone. I know there's a saying that says each one reach one, but I think each one needs to reach 10. It's just that important. So I want to challenge you to take the information that you're learning today, spread it far and wide. I plan to do posts on my page as information as a judge. I am limited to certain things, but information is free and I can share that freely. So I plan to post the information from Mr. School, but make sure you're telling people. And when you hear people giving misinformation, correct them, because that's the biggest thing, that they try to confuse the voters. So if we correct the misinformation and make sure people know the correct things and take advantage of their right and their responsibility to vote, I think we can be successful in November. We're here. Do the job. Judge Alicia Slaughter, if you need to speak to me, I'm here. You can reach me. I have some cards because I do have to step out to another event, but I'm happy to be with you, and thanks for the invitation. Commissioner Harris, Commissioner Harris, I see that you have to leave, Commissioner Harris. Good afternoon. 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 Welcome to North Asian High School, where I am a proud 1976 graduate.
through November the 2nd for early voting. And if you can't make it then, November the 5th is the day. If you know someone that needs a ride, my number is 252-314-1292. I live at 609 St. David Street. People actually come to my house to complain. I sit them right on the porch and give them some lemonade. <laughs> so don't think that I'm the person that you can't get in touch with. How many of you actually know me personally? Raise your hand. So you can call any of these people and they'll tell you where to find them. Again, my name is Paula Harris. I'm running for county commissioner in District 2. And if you can't vote for me, we continue to pray for me. Thank you. and a disadvantage for speaking after two or three other people have spoken. The advantage, of course, is that you heard what they said and you don't have to repeat it. <laughs> so since I've heard what they said before me, uh, let me say that I completely agree with everything that's been said. Okay. I think you can apply those things to me. What's the disadvantage is that you want to think about what is the thing that you're going to talk about. What are you going to say? Well, what I want to do is just give you some information. And before I start, let me, it's interesting we're here in Lincoln. This is good. Uh, of course, you know I'm saving so I represent three counties. Mitchell County, Rock County, and Bertie County. Now, one of the things that the legislature uh, does is try to bring resources back to the well, just for the record, uh, this past session, I was able to get $2 million for Lincoln. For the that's just like, so the cover is participating there, I am here. I just want you to know that. The other thing, too, is that this is information that you would know, but might be good to have some idea about. This amendment that's on the Constitution. Uh, Spiro was correct when he said that, you know, our Constitution says that uh, if you're a citizen, of course, you can vote for persons. And what we have in this uh, amendment is something that was brought up by the Freedom Caucus, which is a far, far right kind of uh, wing of the Republican Party. And they know that uh, you know this does not mean anything. This has no effect on anything that we do. We know citizens, if you're born here or naturalized, you can vote. But this is a political kind of thing that we've done, and it passed. And because the state legislature has a uh, super majority, uh, they can pass it when they want to. So just want to let you know that. So don't get too excited because that's not going to change anything. The U.S. Constitution is what rules, and that's there. Uh, the other thing is that we talk about uh, you know, every election being the most important, and, and that's true. Each time, it becomes more important. And this time, as every speaker has mentioned, you know, we have our democracy on trial. And so we're going to have to do what we have to do to make sure that democracy prevails. And I'm certain that that will happen. And I'm encouraged by what I've seen and travel around my three counties and also around the state. The excitement and the kind of things that are going on. You're talking about people, you know, getting out of registering. And the thing that really excites me is that I've been talking to a lot of young people. And this is unusual. Who talking about what's going on and doing this election. And if we can get young people to come out, I mean, that's that factor that we've been missing so many years. And I, but I see that happening. And I, I would say to you just to, um, a few more words about what 
what you were saying about getting people to vote, is that, you know, if you're a parent or a grandparent, your, uh, your child or grandchild is in college, you know, you can go ahead and get them an absentee ballot. I mean, go and make an application and make sure that they don't miss that. And make sure that they don't necessarily, I would say, waste their life, but register where they are to vote there. And they can be voting here. The other thing, and I'll sit down, is that we in the Edgecombe County especially, we know that all our candidates, they're going to win. But it's not the fact that it's not about us individually, but it's about the whole ticket. It's about the state. If I'm winning by 2,000 votes, that's great. I'm going to win. I feel certain I'm going to win in Edgecombe County. But if I'm winning by 2,000 votes, I should win by 5,000 votes. Not just because I want all those votes, but we, that means that we don't have anybody losing the election by 200 votes or, or, or 79 votes you know, in an election around the state. So none of our statewide candidates ought to lose the election. And the difference can be made in these rural counties like Edgecombe, where we really you know, go out and make sure not just that we win public elections, but we also contribute you know, to the total thing where people are running. And that's what we can do here in Edgecombe County. And again, I have an opponent. I know the ticket. My opponent is from Martin County. And, uh, but I have confidence in what we will do here in this county. And also talk to my people in the other two counties, Bertie and Martin. They're doing the same thing. So I'm encouraged, and I encourage you to keep going with what you're doing. And uh, I look forward to having a celebration at the end of this election. Thank you. Uh, 
My campaign is based on three pillars. The first is experience, and I've already obviously talked a little bit about that. But I'll take a quick minute to mention one thing about my opponent, who is an attorney from Wilson. She is, I pretty much have been in the district court every day of my career. When she filed a run against me, I didn't even know her, which goes to show you how little time she actually spends in district court and doesn't have nearly the experience that I have. The second pillar of my campaign is service. My wife and I, Deborah and I, have spent our entire 25 years in Rocky Mount serving on boards of all kinds of non-profits and civic organizations. I've been the chairman of over 15 different boards. It's important to us that we get involved in our community, learn about the community members in our community, and do everything we can to make our community a better place. And all of our public servants should have that concept in their mind and should do that on a daily basis. And as a district court judge, I will still continue to make that same commitment to our community, but also add in facilitating making the justice system the best it can possibly be. And then the last pillar of my campaign is respect. And what I mean by that is that I can guarantee you that every person that comes into my courtroom will be respected, they will be listened to, heard, and understood. And when they leave my courtroom, they may not like the judgment I gave them, but they will know they were heard and listened to and respected, and I can guarantee you that. Now, I have four asks of you. One is if you have extra money in your pocket, please consider giving it to a candidate. These campaigns are really expensive. I have no idea. If you want to send a mass text, that's $5,000. If you want to send out a paper mailing to people, that's $10,000. And so any little bit that you have extra in your pocket, give it to a candidate that will most definitely help. The second thing is if you're on social media, and most of the candidates have social media, if you'll follow their social media and not only like their posts, but please forward their posts on to your social media group, that's that many less doors we'll have to knock on, that many less people we'll have to phone bank to call. The third thing is on the sample ballot, for all of us down ballot people, the judges and everybody, what I would request is don't start at the top of the president and go all the way to the back because you might get tired and not make it. Start at the bottom on the back. Vote for all of us first and then go over to the president. That last thing, I want you to vote. Thank you very much. Down the lane. Yeah, it used to be, used to be. Well, it's still attached to you. I'm here, thank you, Governor. <laughs> I'm here to represent Jessica Holmes, and you should have her blue card at your place. Okay, what's important about Jessica Holmes for you to know is, first of all, look at your sample ballot. On the first page, our middle of the middle column, the third raised down, it says NC Auditor. Everybody see that? First page. Little way down. Yeah. I'm like a school, my mom was a school teacher, so they taught you but you point out what you got to do. Okay. And you see Jessica Holmes is what is her what is she the first name, second name, or the third name? Second name. Second name. Okay, that's where you're gonna color in that circle. In that circle. Not around that circle, circle the mark in that circle. Okay. That's Jessica Holmes. Now why is she important? First of all, uh, Governor Cooper appointed her to replace Beth Wood when Beth Wood retired and uh, resigned, whichever one she did, was the former auditor, right? Okay. Jessica Holmes was appointed. Why is Jessica Holmes' story? Does anybody know? 
She was elected to um, the Wake County Board of Commissioners. They have a billion dollar budget, so she's very familiar with budgets. And she was the youngest person elected to the Wake County Commission and the youngest person elected to be the County Commission Chair. And she was unanimously elected as chair twice. Okay? She serves at, at the, um, she's been on the faculty at NC State. She's been a lawyer for the NCAE. She represented our school teachers. And she also has been a deputy commissioner at the Industrial Commission doing workers' compensation law. For those of you who know that. So she has an, ex an extensive um, experience in government. So it's been amazing that her experience has been attacked. She's been, it is, it's amazing how black women get an experience somehow doesn't count like everybody else. Yes, okay. Her opponent has nowhere near the experience in government she does, and that's what you need in that job. What she has been doing since she's in office is, is returned, exposed, and returned hundreds of thousands of dollars through the audits at the state auditors. She's been there, I think, now almost a year. She's refocused the efforts of the auditor's office toward the programs that impact the most vulnerable residents. And thirdly, she is working collaboratively with leaders across the state to promote efficient government spending rather than attacking them and investigating them unnecessarily. And we think that is a good move. So please vote for Jessica Holmes. She will follow the money and make sure it's delivering for you as a citizen, as citizens of the state. And it's highly qualified. And you know where she is on the ballot. Okay. So I'm going to My second person is Mo Green, also known as Maurice Green, uh, who is running for uh, Super Oh, let me tell you. I just got to say one other thing about Jessica Holmes. Her opponent was chair of the Board of Trustees at UNC Chapel Hill and was the leader of the anti-DEI efforts wow. at UNC Chapel Hill and in the university. So that was on the UNC Board of Trustees. So he is an extreme, a, a, another MAGA Republican who will bring a MAGA agenda into that auditor's office. And we know in Edgecombe County and Rocky Mountain what that can look like with it. I hate to say this, but with the auditor we had, right? right. If you want to add that on steroids, that's what you'll have. <laughs> I'll just keep that in mind. Okay, Mo Green. And this is another instance of somebody super quiet. Mo Green was the superintendent of public schools in Guilford County, was the deputy superintendent of public schools in Mecklenburg County, and their general counsel, even before that. So he knows public education and, and, and administering and managing public education, he could do that in his sleep. Okay. As chair of the Z Smith Rivers Foundation, he had the opportunity to become a national leader in edu education innovation by participating in multiple philanthropic and nonprofit efforts around education innovation. Uh, his opponents' children are homeschooled. Now, it was said prior, and I haven't monitored what she's been doing every week, but at one point I was in a meeting not about a month ago, they were saying she had never even been in a public school in the state of North Carolina. Or at least not been, maybe to a vote or something, but not to participate in public education. So if you're talking about someone with an extreme agenda, and I, I don't even want to repeat some of the extreme things that she has been noted for saying. Um, this, because of how extreme she is, this race has got nationwide attention. Okay. But what? But Mo is for the basics. He's a, he's, a, he's a regular person, regular brother, well qualified, um, a great leader, and he's interested in three things. Fully, fully funding public schools and making them excellent. Preparing every student for the next phase in their life. And then revering public school educators and staff paying them more for the job they are doing. And those are the three basic things he wants to do, and he's keeping it simple. Okay? On this, on this card, you can see on the back, on the front, you see about both. On the back, you will see uh, 
information about his opponent and some of the extreme, you know, some of the extreme things she has done. We do not want her anywhere near our public education uh, operation. And so, now look on your third column on your back, on the front page. Sorry, Matt, it's on the front page, but you need to turn them over. You need to turn them over. On the uh, third column, second election, the second box. The superintendent of public instruction. Everybody see that third column front page? Okay, whose name is first? Okay, you're going to do what? You're not going to check. You're going to cover it. 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 Cover
to be both number one for both businesses and workers. Those ideas should not be seen as mutually exclusive because, in fact, they are not mutually exclusive. Businesses want to set up where the workforce is strong, where it's vibrant, where it's educated, where it's diverse and resilient. Us workers, we want our employees to do well, generate wealth, grow, and expand opportunities. We just want our fair, a fair situation at work. And look, all throughout time and all the, into the future, labor issues are going to be, they are going to be political. They should not be partisan. What is partisan about expecting a fair day's pay after a fair day's work? What is partisan about expecting to go to work in a healthy and safe situation, or be able to do things like use the bathroom, or get a drink of water, or protect yourself from the hot sun if you're working outside, or get a place to cool off if you're working indoors in, in hot situations? What is partisan about not demanding those things and not expecting to be fired? retaliated against or punished by your boss. Now, while I'm proud to be the Democratic nominee, the other side has put up a 39-year-old boy who has never been elected to public office ever in his life. Now, there's nothing wrong with 39-year-olds. Most of us in this room have been there before, and there's not necessarily anything wrong with being a lawyer. But he makes his practice defending companies, particularly construction companies, who are under investigation or have been cited for wrongdoing by who? You guess it, the Department of Labor. So they put a fox up to go out there. Now, so Estoke County, the, the, the choice in my race could not be much more clear. Who do you want to be the lead advocate for workers in the state? A worker like you or your boss's attorney? I'm proud to be standing in front of you, Brad, who is the local on November 5th. Thank you all very much for having me. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Good afternoon, honey. I'm Deborah Joan Bow. Although I live in Nash County, my husband pastors in Edgecom County. So we are very, very strong advocates for all of the people. One of the things that was just burning in my spirit, uh, when I look over there at uh, Camellia's dance, and we were babies around the table about 40 years ago. We were in our 20s when we worked on everybody's campaign under the sun. And just want to mention, and you might have said something about it beforehand, but people kind of get stuff twisted up. Make sure that uh, as you look at your ballots and you educate the community that they need to make sure that um, Democrat and Republican is under everyone's name. We are representing the Democratic Party. So please make sure that you pay special attention to that. Is that uh, Democrat. I think I'm best pleased to see and hear from you today. Right? You have energized me all over.
He says y'all are socially indoctrinating the children. It's socialist doctrine. This is the kind of person you're talking about. But this is a serious, these opponents are serious. Okay. All right. Well, uh, we'll wait so that we'll be ready for the Simpsons Spin Cup Choir. Bring it up for us. As we need to say, we did a connection and get some marching music. That's the refreshments in the back. Just don't go around. Just get my body. See you down there. Go. Hey, boys. Hey, 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 hey. hey. <laughs>
regional interfaith caucus that is organizing bands to go to any precinct within Edgecombe and Nash County as needed to pick up the person and carry that person to the poll. Not only people that may have limited transportation, but sometimes people are afraid or uncertain of you know how to do this thing, especially if they're a new voter. Therefore, I'm going to give you my personal number, and you may text to me the name and phone number of anyone from here to Bailey to Danita to extreme ends of our counties that needs transportation. And we will begin to organize transportation to reach those individuals. Now, here's my phone number. Of course, area 252 904 8145. Again, 252 904 8145. And I repeat, text me the name of the person and their contact information, including their phone number if they have one and their address, that would be helpful so we'll know which direction the transportation needs to go to. Thank you. And thank you. Let me do my closing remarks here because there are people who have to leave. Let me first of all thank the precinct chair, vice chair of Five Work 6141. Give them a nice round of applause for organizing this. We want to thank them for doing that. Let us be clear, let me be clear. The people that we need to get to vote and the people that we need to contact don't come to all uh, uh, occasions such as this. We need to do what Jeff did and his people did. We need to do what Nat and, and our group did at, at my Pisgah. We need to put some boots on it. We need to stop entertaining ourselves. But the people here already know who we're going to vote for. We need to put boots on the ground and knock on some doors. And Jared will tell you, he'll give his office will give you the numbers. The number of people who did not vote. The last time we had a 71% was President Obama. The last time we had it in 20. It's a shame that Edgecombe County does not have any more than that. We need to stop entertaining ourselves. We don't need to, we know who we're going to vote for. We need for our candidates, we need for our precincts to put some boots on the ground and not on some doors. We did it uh, a couple of Saturdays ago over at my church in Rocky Mountain. And we're going to do it again on the 28th. If all of our precincts would do that, we have a whole lot of people there, you know, whether they're registered or not. You need to make sure that we get those people. Jerry will tell you. We have enough people, and, and we always need more people registered. But if we can get the people who are already registered just to vote, we're in good shape. The, the work is not done. The refreshments are good. The entertainment is good. Uh, we're all good coming here, but we need to sweat a little bit, put some sweat equity in it. Because here, I, some people may not say it, but I'm going to be okay But my grand, my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren. This election determines their fate. And I don't want to lead their fate into people who just come out to eat, sat there, and nothing wrong with eating, you can see how you are. But we need to knock on some doors and get some people ready to vote. Jim has done it. You'll ride down 33 and see all of these signs that Jim put up. We need to get some signs in some yard. And you can't just put signs out. You gotta get permission. You gotta follow the regulation. But we need to get some work done. It's good to sit in this application, but we to do it, but they don't. We need to get some points. We need to get some points to share. And then we need to go out and share it. I'll put some doors, let people know. Um, that's what we need to do. 
This is good. This is great. But it ain't going to get people elected. Ken uh, Senator Smith is not here. No. Let's see. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Powell. And then I got to go to the more I'll be the fifth state. Commissioner Powell. Want to say a word? Yeah. <laughs> Reverend Jordan, Reverend Jordan, I could even call on you to give a good addiction. Well, I'm not on. Um, <laughs> on my up in my other life, <laughs> I work on farm. Well, Jesus said you ain't got but one life. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 